wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. And I try with all my might, but I just can't win the fight. I'm slowly drifting. A vagabond And just when I ran out of room I met a man I didn't know And he told me that I was not alone Oh, he picked me up He turned me around He placed my feet on solid ground I thank the master I thank the savior because he healed my heart, he changed my name, forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. Come on. I cannot deny what I've seen, got no choice but to believe my doubts are burning like ashes in the wind. So, so long to my old friends. Burden and bitterness, you can just keep it moving. No, you ain't welcome here. From now till I walk the streets of gold, I'll sing of how you saved my soul. This wayward son has found his way back home. He picked me up, he turned me around, he placed my feet on solid ground. I thank the master, I thank the savior, because he healed my heart, he changed my name. Forever free, I'm not the same. I thank the master, I thank the savior, I thank God. Hey, lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am free. Hey, lost another one. I am free. I am free. I am hello.
Good morning, good morning, good morning. City of God, Highway Design family. Um, my, I was like literally mid message. So I'm trying to like type this out real quick. But my name is Santa Finger. Thank you for so much. Thank you so much for joining our Sunday celebration. You could have chosen any live stream in the world, but you chose the city of God as your place of worship. And we're so grateful and thankful for that. Um, we're so honored to have you here today. Um, I'm like, I cannot type and talk at the same time. Um, okay, good morning all. That's literally all I try to say. Three words. And I don't know why my brain wasn't computing with that. Um, but good morning to you guys. I'm super excited um, to have you guys, whoever is watching on that side of the screen, Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for joining us. Um, like I said, we're excited to have you. Um, if you've been tuning in lately, um, hearing the announcements and stuff, then you know that this today is our church anniversary. Um, 74 years. Next year, I'm, okay, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't know what the proper word is, but I feel like next year is gonna be very big because it's gonna be 75 years, and that's like, you know, three quarters. So, but as for this year, let's stick with this year, but I'm sure next year is gonna be nice and big. But, but let's, let's stay in the present. Um, today is our 74th church anniversary. I am so excited. Um, I think Doc said 1950 is when it started. That math adds up. That math adds up. 1950, which is crazy, which feels um, so long ago. I remember it like it was yesterday. Let me stop lying. <laughs> but that's crazy. That's absolutely crazy. Um, 74 years. Look how far God has brought us. Um, I'm excited. Today we have a guest spe speaker, um, Bishop Mark Moore. He's going to be speaking for us today. I'm so excited to... Okay, well, I'll be in children's ministry, but I'm so excited to watch the live stream tomorrow and see what he spoke about. Um, and it's April, first, first Sunday of April. I'm super excited. Spring has sprung. Um, in D.C., it was just cherry blossom season, which was absolutely beautiful. Um, I saw from a, my view in the car because I did not go out there because it was very cold, okay? The weather's like not springing how it's supposed to be springing. It's been like cold and rainy, um, but so I didn't see too much of those cherry blossoms. But you know, I'm excited to see what else April has in store for us. Excited to see what the sermon series will be. I think <laughs> Doc said he'll announce it next week and I begged and begged him to give me spoilers to tell me what it is because I wasn't going to snitch. I was gonna snitch, um, but he didn't trust me and for good reasons because I probably wouldn't either. I say I wouldn't snitch, but the second I got on this live stream, I would've been like, hey guys, guess what? The new summer is here, you know? So we have to wait till next week to see what it is. But nonetheless, I'm super excited to see, well, to listen or to hear about what Bishop Mark Moore is going to preach. And guess what? Don't get my greedy butt on the topic of food. After service today, um, we're gonna be having a food truck. Yes, a food truck. It's gonna be right, literally right behind me, like outside, not in the building, not in the building, but it's gonna be outside, like right behind me in the parking lot. Um, we're gonna have a food truck. I'm trying to remember all it's gonna have. It's a lot of options. We're gonna have burgers, wings, hot dogs, pulled pork. Um, and I know there's gonna be some vegan options in case, you know, that's, that's the type of lifestyle you're living. So there's definitely gonna be some vegan options. Um, me personally, I was concerned about the drink. I wanted to know what drink they're gonna have, um, but I'm sure it'll be something good. Um, water, maybe soda. Um, if you see me smiling, it's literally cause Doc, now he has, it's Doc and Shallon. They are both in front of the camera making funny faces. I have like, Jonay taking pictures. One, I don't know how I'm gonna get it to you guys, but he literally does this every week and I fold every time. I'm such an easy person to laugh. Um, it does not take much for me to chuckle or laugh. So I think he knows that, plays that to his advantage. Um, but I'm excited, it's the church anniversary and come on out if you are, aren't already here because the food truck, okay. Not just for the food truck, but for the word of God, okay. And I'm excited for what the praise team is gonna do as well because they were sounding good today. Um, let's see who's on real quick before I forget. We have Sister Deborah Hawkins. She says PTLCOG, that means praise the Lord, city of God. We have Sister Rita Rainwright. She says good morning to all. 
Good morning to you. Um, we have Sister Tanya. Good morning to you. Um, Sister Kimberly. Oh, she named her five. That's right. Make sure you guys share your, share share this live and know your five. Okay. Um, tag at least five people that you want to see God move um, in your life. I think that's still what it's for. I forget. I think that's what it's for. Um, yeah, tag your five. I just go to teen Bible study and it shows, guys. It shows. Because I know we're still doing the um, tag your five thing. Um, and I think it's for that purpose that I just said, but I'm honestly not sure. But make sure you tag your five. Um, yeah, sister, Rita Rainwright. Oh, I already said her name. Oh, she said grace and peace. Okay, okay, okay. Um, yes, grace and peace, grace and peace. Yeah, sister, Sonia Jones, good morning. That's my girl right there. Um, sister Pam, good morning. She's like right. Okay, why did I look over and not see her? She's literally was right on stage though. Good morning to you. Um, we got Sister Eula Hill. Good morning to you. Um, good morning, Sister Shirley Rideout. Um, good morning, Sister Trina SJ. We have a lot of good goodness. Um, Sister Megan Giles. I pray that I pronounced that correctly. 19 views. Oh, y'all are in deep today for this live stream. It's good to see you guys. Um, I feel like I'm reading a lot of... Um, I love my girls. Okay, Women's History Month still lives in my heart, even though March, March is over. But where's the guys at? Come on, guys. I don't want to see you guys come. There's 19 people. You cannot tell me that that is all girls, all right? That is all females. I want to see everybody commenting, okay? Um, Shallon just told me that's rude. It wasn't... <laughs> It wasn't meant to be in a rude way. I just want everybody to be engaging and commenting. It really helps to know that I'm doing my job somewhat right if you guys are commenting down something. Um, on the YouTube side, we have 15 watching. Good morning, Sister Betty McCoy. Um, good morning, Sister Tiffany, Sister Latoya. Um, the question is how? Ooh, I feel like I'm talking to the Riddler. They said grace and peace. Whoever that is on the other side of the screen, good morning to you. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Sister Mary Ann Grimsley. She says, greetings and salvations, family. Oh, salutations. Why did I think that made sense? Greetings and salutations, family. Congratulations on our church anniversary. I can't wait to be back in person with everyone next Sunday. Love you. We can't wait to see you back as well. Love you, babes. Um, we have Sister... Taylor, Taylor's open, okay, that's a long title, but she says, good morning, beautiful, um, be blessed, everyone, thank you, good morning to you, hey, girl, that's my church baby right there, I don't know if you even saw her, um, that's my girl, that's my girl, I love Sadie, um, but I'm almost wrapping up, if you're not here, make sure you get here, 1304 Business Center Way, Edwin, Maryland. But if you're just sticking in line with us today, still, thank you so much for joining us. You won't regret it. You, you won't regret it. I know you won't. Um, but thank you. And make sure you share this live with somebody. Bye. Hey, welcome to the City of God, Highway to Zion. We are so glad you've joined our online service. You could have chosen any other church, but you chose us and we are excited. We're a church that loves God, His people, and we love to have fun. Yep, it's as simple as that. Here at the City of God, we have three core values. Discover, connect, and serve. And by that, I mean it's our focus to discover God in new ways, connect with His people by building great friendships, and serve in the community. Although we're located in Edgewood, Maryland, we're also wherever you are through the grace of technology. If you would like to discover more about God and our approach, shoot us an email at discover at ziontc.org. We would love for you to join our e-church. We're going live in just a moment, so get comfortable, grab a light snack, open your hearts, and let's dive in. We can't wait to meet you. Hey guys, I'm so glad you joined us today. You could have visited any live stream, but you chose the City of God. If this is your first time here, here's a few things you can expect. There's going to be crazy, organic worship, a safe place to connect with God and genuine people. Here at the City of God, we have three core values. Discover, connect, serve. The City of God is a church of diversity. We're made up of all ages, walks of life, and different regions. However, we have one goal in common, and that's God. 
So open your hearts, free your mind, and make room for God because he's definitely going to show up today. If you would like to learn how to discover God and more about the city of God, please follow us on all our digital media outlets or visit our website at www.cityofgodnow.org. You can also send us an email at discover at cityofgodnow1.org. We would love to hear from you. Well, thank you for listening in. We're going live soon, so grab your favorite drink or snack, get your Bibles, pour out your hearts, and let's go. Can you imagine what it would be like if there wasn't love? Can you picture what life would become? Without love, there'd be no compassion, no comfort, no peace. Without love, there'd be no caring, no giving, no kindness. Without love, we would be consumed by selfishness and filled with arrogance. Without love, grace would have never been offered. Mercy would have been unimaginable. When you add love to the equation, everything changes. Love is patient, love is kind, not envious or prideful. Love puts others before ourselves, chooses peace over anger. Love protects, trusts, hopes, perseveres. Love changes everything. You are loved. You are loved by the very hands that painted the stars and set the planets into motion. You are not a coincidence. He chose you to exist in this very moment. You are not a drop of water in the ocean. You are seen, and you are loved. You were hand-picked by the King of Kings. He knit you together in your mother's womb. He knows the number of hairs on your head. He is your father, and you are his child. He delights at the opportunity of talking with you. No height or depth can separate you from the love of God. His love is endless, like the depths of the seas. It's a love that stands firm when you are at your lowest. His love is full of grace and compassion. You are loved without conditions. You are deeply cherished and loved by the one who created you. Take in the peace, knowing that you are a loved child of the King. Let that love guide you empower you, and fill your heart with joy. His love has no beginning and no end. The love of God will always be. You are and have always been dearly loved. Good morning, City of God, Highway Design, and welcome to our Church History Sunday Celebration. My name is Xavier, and I'm here to give you your morning announcements. Before we do the announcements, let us wish a happy birthday to Riley Gore, Deshaun Kelly, Tessie Lee Davis, Shannon Ezel, Imani Bell, 
April Simmons, Daniel Smith, Karanja Smith, Kevon Davis, Carlos Smith, Maurice Harris, and to anyone else who's celebrating a birthday or anniversary this week, happy birthday and happy birthday anniversary. Here are your morning announcements. Our next ministerial alliance is this Wednesday, April 10th on Zoom, and the Zoom meeting ID is 812-7027-7027. Five, two. Again, that meeting ID is 812-7027-7052. April 17th is our next senior luncheon. For more information, please see Elder Marva Schultz. April 18th is our next food giveaway. Stay tuned for more information. And our next prayer revival will be April 30th through May 3rd. Stay tuned for more information for that as well. This is the end of our morning announcements. If you have any questions or concerns about the announcements you heard today, please email the church office at discover at cityofgodnow1.org. We hope you go home with a new understanding from the word today. We hope to see you on these same platforms next week. Have a blessed rest of your week. Hey, welcome to the City of God, Highway to Zion. We are so glad you've joined our online service. You could have chosen any other church, but you chose us and we are excited. We're a church that loves God, His people, and we love to have fun. Yep, it's as simple as that. Here at the City of God, we have three core values. Discover, connect, and serve. And by that, I mean it's our focus to discover God in new ways, connect with His people by building great friendships, and serve in the community. Although we're located in Edgewood, Maryland, we're also wherever you are through the grace of technology. If you would like to discover more about God and our approach, shoot us an email at discover at ziontc.org. We would love for you to join our e-church. We're going live in just a moment, so get comfortable, grab a light snack, open your hearts, and let's dive in. We can't wait to meet you. Hey guys, I'm so glad you joined us today. You could have visited any live stream, but you chose the City of God. If this is your first time here, here's a few things you can expect. There's going to be crazy organic worship, a safe place to connect with God and genuine people. Here at the City of God, we have three core values. Discover, connect, serve. The City of God is a church of diversity. We're made up of all ages, walks of life, and different regions. However, we have one goal in common, and that's God. So open your hearts, free your mind, and make room for God because he's definitely going to show up today. If you would like to learn how to discover God and more about the City of God, please follow us on all our digital media outlets or visit our website at www.cityofgodnow.org. You can also send us an email at discover at cityofgodnow1.org. We would love to hear from you. Well, thank you for listening in. We're going live soon, so grab your favorite drink or snack, get your Bibles, pour out your hearts, and let's go. Good morning, good morning, good morning, City of God, and welcome to our very special Church Anniversary Sunday Celebration. Today, we recognize and celebrate 74 years. Are you guys excited for service? Wherever you're watching from, if it's online, at your job, at your house, on vacation, in the car, 
wherever you are, I challenge you to know your five, tag your five, and invite them on into the service. Are you guys ready to go in? Let's go inside. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good morning, city of God. We here again on a Sunday morning. Let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for being so good to us, Lord. We come back like one of those lepers and we come to say thank you, 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 thank you. Oh, you're so good to us. You're so kind to us. You're so wonderful, God. We thank you for the week that just passed. Thank you for the blessings, the benefits, and mercies you put upon us last week. Lord, we thank you for the blessing and benefits and mercies you have for us this week. We come here to your house to lift you up, to magnify you. Lord, we thank you right now for this being the day of, that we celebrate our church anniversary. Oh, God, we thank you for these past 70 some years of blessing us throughout the years that this church has been a light that shines in darkness. Lord, we thank you for the saints that have come through and have gone on, and we try to build a building, a house for you, that we can worship you, that we can praise you, that we can magnify you. Oh, God, bless somebody this morning, oh, God. You know what they have need of. Oh, bless the Lord, the burden to be light, oh, God. Bless somebody's heart that they want to be saved, that they want to be delivered. Bless somebody's heart that they want to be encouraged, oh, God. Do a mighty work this morning right now. Satan, you are a liar in the blood of Jesus against you. But, Father, do what you do best, oh, God. We'll forever magnify, we'll forever lift you up, we'll forever give you praise. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen. Psalm 17. Hear a just cause, O Lord. Attend to my cry. Give ear to my prayer from lips free of deceit. From your presence, let my vindication come. Let your eyes behold the right. You have tried my heart. You have visited me by night. You have tested me, and you will find nothing. I have purpose that my mouth will not transgress. With regards to the works of man, by the word of your lips, I have avoided the ways of the violent. My steps have held fast to your path. My feet have not slipped. I call upon you, for you will answer me, O God. Incline your ear to me. Hear my words. Wondrously show your steadfast love. O Savior of those who seek refuge from their adversaries at your right hand. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hold me in the shadow of your wings from the wicked who do me violence. My deadly enemies who surround me. They close their hearts to pity. With their mouths they speak arrogantly. They hope they have now surrounded our steps. They have set their eyes to cast us to the ground. He is like a lion, eager to tear, as a young lion lurking in ambush. Arise, O Lord, confront him, subdue him, deliver my soul from the wicked by your sword, from men by your hand, O Lord, from men of the world whose portion is in this life. You fill their wombs with treasures. They are satisfied with children, and they leave their abundance to their infants. As for me, I shall behold your face in righteousness. When I awake, I shall be satisfied with your likeness. Praise 
prayer for the nations. Today we pray for the nations of Qatar, Bahrain, Iran, Norway, and Sweden. God, we thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your loving kindness, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. Oh God, Lord, we thank you for these nations of people, Jesus. Lord, we ask God that you would pour out your spirit on these nations and on, on the people, oh God. Lord, let there be missionaries and disciples, oh God, that can win the lost, Jesus, Lord. Let the leadership, oh God, have a heart for the people and a heart, Lord for strategy to strengthen their nations. God, Lord, let the, the leadership have a heart for you. Oh, God, bless these nations. Oh, God, bless their lands and bless their people. Oh, God, let your love shine bright in these nations. God, we bless you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Good morning, city of God. Does anybody love the Lord today? Anybody love Jesus with all your heart, with all of your mind, and with all of your soul? If that's you, will you help us worship the King this morning? I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. heart, my mind, my soul belongs to you. You paid the price for me way back on Calvary. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today, because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you, I lift you up, and I magnify your name. That's why my heart is filled with praise. Let's say that one more time. Sing, I love you, Lord, today. I love you, I love you, I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way, that's why I praise you. Whoa, my heart is filled with praise. than silver Lord you are more costly than gold Lord you are more beautiful than diamonds and nothing I desire compares to
compares to you. Jesus, you brought heaven down. 
down My sins are great Your love is greater So what can separate us now? What a wonderful name it is What a wonderful name Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name, in the name, say it on. Oh, tell me who can stand me for us when we call on His great name. Amen. Jesus, 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 we have. In the name, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we have the victory. Oh, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Satan, Satan, you have to be. Oh, tell me who can stand me for us when we call on his great name. Jesus, precious Jesus, we have the victory. Say it again in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we have the victory. In the name of Jesus, His mighty name. Say it up, say it on. You have to flee. Big 
The year of 2024 is the year of restoration. It is a time of healing, repairing, reimbursement, and refinancing. It is a year of restoration, restitution, reinvention, renovation, reestablishment, and recharge. Although the Lord God has promised to restore all things throughout the year, there are specific things He will reinstate throughout the month, April 2024. These decrees are the announcements uh, for April 2024. I decree and declare that 2024 is the year of restoration. The Lord God will restore, repair, recover, reinvigorate, reestablish, refinance, and recharge every area of your life throughout this year. I decree and declare that in April 2024, the Lord shall restore the rains. He will saturate your seed you will see and experience the first fruits of God's harvest. The rain of heaven shall be your portion. I decree and declare, the rain of heaven shall fall upon your life. The Holy Spirit shall fall on you like rain. You shall experience a mighty outpouring of the presence and power of God. The rain of heaven is a multifaceted rain. It, as it falls on your life, you shall experience. The rain of super, supernatural joy will shower on you. It will manifest the of the Lord. You will experience no corruption and no decay. The rain of miracles will shower on you. It will manifest the healing of all brokenness. The rain of job promotion will shower on you. It will manifest elevation and acceleration. The rain of divine favor will shower on you. It will open doors of opportunities and advancement. The rain of healing power will shower on you. Because of the finished work of Jesus, you are totally healed. The rain of uncommon success will shower on you. The Lord Jesus Christ said, you are approved. The rain of unusual manifestation will shower on you. The Lord Jesus Christ shall personally appear to you. The rain of supernatural solutions shall, will shower on you. The Lord is making known everything that was hidden and a mystery. The rain of encounter will shower on you. The Holy Spirit of God has ignited divine revival in your soul. The rain of double portion will shower on you. The right of the firstborn has been released upon your life. The rain of resurrection will shower on you. You will experience the resurrection life of Jesus Christ and not experience premature death. The rain of total restoration will shower on you. Without fail, you shall recover all. I decree and declare that your deserts have turned into fertile green pastures. No more barrenness, no more dry season, 
no more parts land, no more famine, no more poverty. I decree and declare that the rain of heaven shall cause your tree to bear fruit. Your harvest shall yield full strength. I decree and declare that the early and latter rain shall fall on your life. The Lord God is sending the rains. It will manifest prosperity and healing. I decree and declare that the threshing floors will be full of grain and the vats will overflow with new wine and fresh oil. I decree and declare that the Lord will restore to you the years that the locust, the swarming locust, the canker worm, and the caterpillar have eaten. You will surely eat and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord. I decree and declare that you shall uh, not experience a water can type of rain. No, the heaven shall open and provide the rain. As the heavens rain down from above, the earth shall open up and produce an abundant harvest. I decree and declare that the Lord is doing a new thing in your life. Now it is springing up. Can you see it? He is making a way in the desert and rivers in the wasteland. I decree and declare the Lord is giving water in the desert and rivers in the wilderness to give drink to his people, the people he formed for himself, so they might declare his praise. I decree and declare there's a sound of God's rain coming to earth. It is a sound of the latter rain, the outpouring of his Holy Spirit as never before experienced. Look, 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 it's coming. Don't give up. Keep your eyes toward heaven. I decree and declare the rain of heaven is falling on every seed that you lost, wasted, discarded, misappropriated, squandered, ate, or was stolen. The rain shall restore every seed to you this month, 24, April 2024, in Jesus' name. I decree and declare that you shall plant seeds that will produce abundance and fruitfulness with both seasonal and residual harvest. The rain of heaven is the fruitfulness of the Lord. I decree and declare that although you have sown in tears, you shall reap in joy. With abundant praise, you shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing your sheaves with you. I decree and declare that the goodness of God has officially and permanently been attached to your life starting April 2024. You shall overflow with blessing, favor, and abundance in Jesus' name. Get used to the overflow. This is your season for dancing in the rain. Dance, the famine is over. Dance, poverty has ended. Dance, abundance is your daily portion. Dance, victory is determined. Dance, your enemies are, are defeated. Dance, the night is over. Dance, the morning has begun. Dance, joy is here. Dance, the Lord is with you. These decrees are valid and substantiated. The reign of heaven is the edict of the Lord for your life. Henceforth, it is eternally written by the decree of the Lord, the reign has been ordered to manifest restoration. As of April 2024, the reign of restoration shall recover all. In Jesus' name, amen.
Will you celebrate the Lord for 74 years of, of church history? Glory to God. Hallelujah. We have a, a rich history here at, at, at the City of God, and we're just so grateful uh, for the many, many years the Lord has uh, brought us uh, from 1950 when uh, Zion Temple started to 1982 when Highway Holiness uh, began and then of course in, in 2023 when uh, both Highway and Zion uh, merged together and now being the, the city of God. Hallelujah. We're just grateful today. The Lord has been good to us and we're just uh, thankful. Uh, that's just of course as you, you saw that, that, uh, that small clip there. It's only a small portion of individuals uh, who have served uh, over the years in these uh, 74 years. Uh, one of the projects for uh, our uh, media team uh, this year uh, is to uh, con uh, compile a, a documentary because we don't want to lose uh, any of our, our history and so they're they're planning now so just in case someone comes to you and, and they want to ask you uh, about the history and some of the things that have gone on over the years uh, you'll be hel helpful to, for us to be able to share uh, all of those things and so thank you so much for that uh, I'm glad today our, our the founder of uh, Zion Temple Church uh, and of course out of which uh, I Way home this church. Uh, the son is here, Deacon Marvin Croxell. God bless you, sir. Amen. It's so good that he's here in, in, in the house of the Lord. Uh, and we're just uh, thankful. God has been amazing to us, and we appreciate him uh, for all of his goodness and his mercy and the kindness in uh, our life. Will you turn to the person next to you? Tell him, I'm glad to see you today. Come on, tell somebody else, I'm glad to see you today. Those who are watching online, if you'll put that in, in, in the comment section, just I, I'm glad to, glad to see you today. Uh, it's just good for us uh, to be in the house of God, uh, and we're grateful for all that he uh, has done, is doing, and what he shall do in uh, our lives. Come on, repeat these declarations uh, after me. Uh, today, I raise my voice to declare that this is my year of restoration. Everything I lost, misplaced, wasted, misappropriated, or was foreclosed, or repossessed, or was stolen, shall be restored to me now. I acknowledge my sins. I've been washed in the blood. I am forgiven. Therefore, I know the Lord shall restore my life, my mind, my hope my dreams, my family, my ministry, my health, my wealth, my time, my resources, my home, my business, my seed, my harvest, my inheritance, my name, and everything attached to me. His word is true. I refuse to doubt. The devil is a liar and a deceiver. The Lord will do what he said, without fail, I shall recover all. Without fail, I shall recover all. Without fail, I shall recover all. He's doing it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, Lord, you can say, this is my year, and the day is my day. If you receive it for yourself, come on, clap your hands. Give a little praise today. Those who are watching online, if you hit that like button, God bless you. Uh, I'm telling you, the Lord is doing exactly what he said. Everything that he promised for your life shall come to pass. I don't care what that devil's trying to tell you in your ear. Hallelujah. He is a liar and he is a deceiver. Everything that has been promised from you, everything that the devil stole, God, hallelujah, everything the devil stole shall be restored to you without fail. I don't care what it looks like right now. I don't care what it feels like right now. I don't care what, he, what he's trying to tell you in your ear. Without fail, I shall recover all. I'm getting, I'm getting my health back. I'm getting my mind back. I'm getting my peace back. I'm getting.
get my promotion back. Are you hearing me? Uh, everything that the adversary stole shall be restored to you. Will you take a moment and lift your voice and thank God that his promise is true. Oh, thank you, Jesus. He's going to do what he said. He's going to do what he said. So I thank him for that. Thank him for that. Glory to God. He will bring to pass everything uh, that, that he, he promised. Uh, I'm excited today uh, because uh, as we had mentioned before, there is, has been, and you guys have been seeing it, there's continual progress, continual progress. You've, you've been watching. Uh, and, and for that, uh, if you haven't noticed uh, as of yet, our little fancy new podium that, that we have. So excited, so excited about that. Uh, and so they, they custom made this just for us. And so uh, I'm super excited for just where we're going and the things that the Lord uh, is, is doing. Let's prepare ourselves to bring the Lord uh, his time. If you're going to take a picture, hold up, let me pose just real quickly. Listen. Maybe I should look like I'm, I'm preaching. <laughs> I, I look like I'm screeching. Like. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. I have no sense whatsoever. And so maybe <laughs> the Lord shall restore my mind this year. <laughs> he's ever so my mind. But I'm excited today. The Lord is just, he's absolutely wonderful. And we thank him for his goodness and his mercies. Let's prepare ourselves to bring the Lord his tithe and to present also with uh, our offering. If you need the envelope for the Lord's tithe or for your offering, simply raise your hand. One of the ushers will come to you and assist you on today. Again, if you need the envelope for the Lord's tithe or for your offering, simply raise your hand. One of the ushers will come to you and assist you on, on today. Uh, while they're passing out, I don't want to forget this. Uh, we're grateful the Lord uh, has saw Sister uh, Summer Merkel uh, to come through uh, surgery. And she's here in, in the house of the Lord today. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, the Lord is a healer and a miracle worker. Hallelujah. A healer and a miracle worker. And we praise God. We praise the Lord uh, for that. Uh, we bring the Lord uh, his tithe. It is not uh, our tithe. It's the Lord's tithe. So we bring the Lord uh, his tithe uh, for his. Uh, we got some hands on this side and that side. So the ushers, you guys will make sure. Thank you so much. Uh, we bring the Lord his tithe. That word tithe, you hear me say that uh, week after week means ten. So bring the Lord a tenth of that which he allows us to be able to make. Uh, as we bring that to him, we activate the promises of God uh, that are attached to, to the tithe. The Lord says he would pour us out blessing that we won't have room to receive. And so we know that word enough uh, not only means abundance, but it also means more than can be talked about in a lifetime. As we bring the Lord uh, his tithe, we activate uh, those promises. Now we are in every member tithing church. We bring the Lord his tithe individually and also corporately activating those promises. We also bring God an offering. The offering works like the seed. God does not require a percentage uh, as, 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 as it is with the tithe. He just tells us to give in proportion of how we've been blessed. So as we give, we activate the promises of, of the Lord, knowing that in the system of reciprocity, whatever one sows, that shall we also reap. We are in every member uh, giving church. We've been got an offering individually and also corporately, and we know that if you give, it shall be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall be given to uh, your bosom. Let's raise the Lord's tithe and our offering in the air. Father, we thank you today for the opportunity to give. We bring to you your tithe. We present you with our offering. Our request is simply this. Bless us indeed. Increase our border. Let your hand be on us. Keep us from evil. We'll bring you honor and praise. We'll be thanking you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, your ways to give. Those who want to get by credit card, you want to get more securely, there is a kiosk in the rear of the building. You can make your way there now to give. Again, those who want to get by credit card, you want to get more securely, there is a kiosk in the rear of the building. You can make your way there now to give. If those who want to give electronically, you can see on, on your screen, the cash app is the dollar sign, City of God now number one city of god now number one the venmo is the at sign city of god now the number one city of god now number one 
the Give the Fine City of God Iowa Design. Those who are watching, uh, you can call in if you want to get my credit card, 410-785-8730, and get that way. Or you can mail it into City of God Highway Design, 1304, Business in a Way, Edge of the Maryland, 21040. We're going to ask uh, these two sides stand and face one another. Uh, these two sides stand, face one another. The ushers in the rear, they're going to direct you around. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus, and he loves me. I love Jesus, he's my savior. Songs are raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus, and he loves me. I love Jesus. He's my savior, songs are raging, he's my shelter, Mary lead me, I will follow, I love Jesus, and he loves me, I love Jesus, he's my savior, songs are raging, he's my shelter, Mary leads me, I will follow. Songs on raging, he's my shelter. Where he leads me, I will follow. I love Jesus, and he loves me. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Where he upcoming announcements, followed by the acknowledgement of birthdays and anniversaries, as well as also uh, the official welcome. And today we're excited uh, on uh, this, uh, our church anniversary. We've got some new members uh, that's going to receive the, the right hand of fellowship uh, on today as well. So we're super excited about that. Good morning, City of God, Highway Design, and welcome to our church history Sunday celebration. My name is Xavier, and I'm here to give you your morning announcements. Before we do the announcements, let us wish a happy birthday to Riley Gore, Deshaun Kelly, Tessie Lee Davis, Shannon Ezell, Imani Bell, April Simmons, Daniel Smith, Karanja Smith, Kevon Davis, Carlos Smith, Maurice Harris, and to anyone else who's celebrating a birthday or anniversary this week, happy birthday and happy birthday anniversary. Here are your morning announcements. Our next ministerial alliance is this Wednesday, April 10th on Zoom, and the Zoom meeting ID is 
8-1-7-0-2-7-5-2. Again, that meeting ID is 812-7027-7052. April 17th is our next senior luncheon. For more information, please see Elder Marver Schultz. April 18th is our next food giveaway. Stay tuned for more information. And our next prayer revival will be April 30th through May 3rd. Stay tuned for more information for that as well. This is the end of our morning announcements. If you have any questions or concerns about the announcements you heard today, please email the church office at discover at cityofgodnow1.org. We hope you go home with a new understanding from the word today. We hope to see you on these same platforms next week. Have a blessed rest of your week. Good morning, City of God, Highway to Zion, and welcome to our 71st, 74th Church History Sunday celebration. My name's Xavier. My name is Marva. And we are here to give you your official welcome. Whether you are joining us online or here in person, we truly thank you for worshiping with us today. If you are joining us online today, we ask that you please place a V or your name in the comment section just so we can acknowledge you on today. And if you're here in person, we ask that you, if you please stand or wave your hand just so that we can acknowledge you on today. We want to officially welcome you to our Sunday celebration here at the City of God Highway to Zion formerly known as Highway Holiness and Zion Temple Church. We will never forget those names. We will never forget those names. Amen. That's where we started. We hope you have enjoyed the service thus far, and we look forward to possibly meeting you further after the service. So we want to greet you in the name of Jesus. So if we grab you, wave. Now, City of God, this is our time to welcome our visitors of today. If you are online, please send hearts, thumbs up, or type, type in the comment section, welcome for our guests. Or if you're here in person, welcome your neighbor, send them a hug, a high five, blow them a kiss. We want to let, we want to let them know that we certainly welcome them today. Not only today, but you are welcome at any time here at the City of God, Highway to Zion. Again, we speak shalom over your life. Have a blessed rest of your day and a super week, and stay encouraged. Bye. Bye. Praise the Lord, city of, city of God. Praise the Lord. Is anybody excited to be in the house of God this morning? Amen, amen. I am excited. I am excited. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all those who might be new who are watching online. Uh, my, my name is Dr. Rochelle, for those that may not know me. Dr. Rochelle, I'm the associate pastor of the new membership and online program at City of God. Give God some hand clap because of the growth. Amen. On the, on the 74th, what is it, 74th church anniversary, um, I just want to uh, bring you to the scripture Acts, in the book of Acts, chapter 2, verse 46 and 47. Listen to this. It said, and day by day, attending the temple together and breaking bread in their homes, they received food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having favor with all, all the people. And the Lord added to their number day by day those who were being saved and the Lord added how many of you believe that God is adding people to the vision of city of God ha hallelujah hallelujah so I am excited I've worked with Dr. Turner and we have revamped the membership process at city of God and I'm so excited for that so today we are here to celebrate our first fruits of that membership process we have some graduates y'all we got some graduates amen 
Amen, amen. So just to let you know about it, um, it is a, what, what we have done is that it's at the beginning of every month, for anybody that is interested, it's at the beginning of every month, it's four classes where we go over everything from who's who at City of God. Who, okay, if you want to get into security, who do you talk to? If you want to become an usher, who do you talk to? But also, not just about what you can do for the church, but what can the church do better to serve you? Because there's families that are hurting out there. There's families that need other ministries. There's families that need things that we can do to serve them. So it's really a two-way street, and I'm so excited for this first group. The, um, so as, as I invite them up, the first person I want to uh, uh, bring up is actually, uh, I want to say that we actually have online membership as well. So praise God for the online membership. I want everybody to just wave to a camera, and the camera, I want you to wave. Uh, I want you to do, show the camera, and everybody say, hi, Pristina. Come on, y'all, nice and loud. Say, hi, Pristina. Tell her, welcome to the city of God. That is our online member, amen? And she has joined and she has been through the classes. It's not just in person, but it's also in Zoom. So we're growing in many different ways. So now I just want to invite everybody that has been through the February cohort class to please come up at this time. Please come up. If you don't come up, I'm going to call you out. So just come on up. Come on up, Shakina. Quit. Come on up. All right. Amen. Come on, Kim. And listen, I want y'all to give them a huge hand clap of praise. Amen. Amen. Sharon, come up with your whole family, girl. Your whole family. Come on. I see you. Come on up. Come on up. <laughs> Woo. So there are also some that could not be here at this time, but I just want you all to um, face the audience and just introduce yourselves because this is your new family now. Okay, so come on over here, Cam. All right. And then just, let me just start with your name. Hi, I'm Kimberly Beauchamp. I'm Matt Beauchamp's mother. <laughs> here for about a year I started coming with Matthew and I just love it here I love the preaching and I'm just so happy to be a part of the family uh, so my name is Quentin Davis uh, I moved here from Detroit uh, so I am excited to find uh, a church home that's similar to mine so I feel like uh, looking around here uh, reminds me of uh, people at my home church. So this just feels like home. So uh, I thank you all for welcoming me. Hi, I'm Shakina. Um, I'm originally from Connecticut. Um, this too is my first church home since relocating. So happy to be here as well. I'm waiting on the other half of my family. Come on, come on. Come on, baby girl. Good morning, I am Sharon Thornton, and this is my first church home since moving up from Florida back in 2018, been to many a churches around. And this church here is definitely a blessing on the behalf of myself and my family. Um, this is my oldest daughter, Miss Senior, graduating this year, class of 2024. Her name is Kira Thornton. And then my seventh grader, Miss Natalia Thornton Baines, my gamer. I know you've seen her dance. Um, we enjoy loving uh, the ministry of dance here. I do have a son, he's in Children's Church. His name is Ezekiel Maddox at the age of six, had a birthday last Friday. So I just wanna say um, to the pastor of the church, Dr. Turner, and to everyone here, Pastor Jessica, I was brought here by Kendra Carter. And I just wanna say thank you I was also told about this church by Miss Rose Neal and her husband. So I hadn't came when she invited, but I apologize. But I'm glad I'm here now. There's a time and a season for everything. So I bless you and I thank you for receiving us. Come on, everybody, stand to your feet and welcome to the city of God, New Memphis, come on. So at this time, I'm gonna, I, 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 at this time, I'm gonna have y'all face this way, 
and we're going to have the lead pastor, the one and only Dr. L. Lamont Turner, uh, give a prayer and a blessing over the new members, and then after which we will hear uh, our speaker, I believe. Let's pray. Father, thank you today for your, your graces in our life. We pray your blessings, Lord, upon these who are a part of your family and now a part, Lord, of, of our family as well. As they have, have joined along with us, our pledge to you is to love on them and to protect them and to surround them and to help bring out, Lord, the gifts of God that are inside them. And Lord, as they've made that, that same commitment unto you and, and also back un, unto us, I pray, Lord, that you will bless each of them in their area of gifting, that they may demonstrate, God, the same love that you have for others. And they may, as they have found refuge in your city, may they also bring others, Lord, to find refuge in your city as well. We give you thanks. We praise you now and always. In the most wonderful name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Super grateful, super grateful for all that God is doing. Uh, thank God for uh, Dr. Harold and, and all uh, his work and, and the team that's been working along uh, with him to, to make all these things possible. Uh, today, uh, before I bring the speaker up, I've got a, a dear friend of mine that I've known uh, for years and years and years. I, I was back I was telling him on, uh, on yesterday, I have known his parents. Uh, before he was ever born. And so I've watched uh, him, uh, of course, not only come into the world, uh, but watched the Lord's gifting upon his life uh, back when, back in the day, I can say that now, back in the day when we were uh, youth uh, president of the West Virginia and East Citizen Council, uh, he, was, he was three years old uh, playing the drums, carrying the whole service, right? Carrying the whole service. Highly gifted uh, young man. Uh, now he's on the, he's our guest a keyboardist uh, on today, Minister Ronnie Joplin, amen, and his uh, lovely wife as well, God bless you, uh, and so we're just, we're just grateful, um, usually when I'm at, at IAF, uh, he's always usually, uh, always there and usually playing uh, for me and accompanying me, so I'm grateful for that. Uh, I, this is kind of putting you on the spot real quickly, I, I know, uh, but can you just play a little something for us, just play a little something for us and just, uh, just bless the saints uh, today. Thank you, Lord. Um, and we're just, again, we're grateful uh, for uh, God's goodness and the kindness he shows uh, to us. 74 years. 74 years. Um, all those uh, who served as uh, pastors of, of this church, Pastor uh, Claire uh, Croxell, uh, Pastor uh, Dorothy Barnes, Pastor uh, Clarence J. Barnes, uh, Pastor uh, Larry uh, Ringo, uh, and today um, the only former living pastor uh, that we have of this church, uh, Bishop uh, Mark 
A. Moore Sr. We're grateful for um, the life that he has lived before the Lord and uh, his ministry that is known not only throughout the United States, but in uh, various parts of the world uh, as well. Um, knowing the commission that is on his life and the high demand uh, that he has uh, in serving uh, in Chicago at the uh, Indiana uh, Pentecostal Church of God, um, I put a call in and just ask, you know, uh, could you come and step away uh, on a Sunday? Uh, his uh, response, for you, sure I'll do it. Uh, and so I'm grateful, <clears throat> grateful for friendships, grateful for, for uh, brotherhood uh, that the Lord get, provides within uh, his kingdom. Uh, you already, are, most of you are familiar with uh, the ministry of Bishop Moore. Some of you, this will be your first time uh, being able to be introduced to uh, the gifts of God that, that is uh, in him and on him that he is. I'm going to ask you, if you will, uh, rise to your feet, please, uh, out of honor uh, for the man of God as he comes to the pulpit. Please receive at this time uh, Bishop Mark A. Moore, Sr., Pastor Indiana. While you're standing, will you give the Lord a great praise? Is that your best praise for him? Come on, let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Let's lift him up. Let's magnify him. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. You can be you can be seated in the presence of the Lord. I love that song he was playing, summer and winter, springtime and hot. In their courses on high, join with all nature in manifold witness. To thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I, I see. All I have needed.
opportunity to be here celebrating 74 years, 74 years, amen, amen, and I thank God that this is the year of restoration and recovery. I, um, as Dr. Turner has said, I, I am in a new assignment, a new season in the windy city of Chicago, and um, I've been there for about a year and a half now. This will mark the third Sunday in 18 months or so that I have missed, one due to sickness, one due to uh, being on a very short vacation, and then this one. And uh, so this is the third Sunday I have been very uh, careful about shepherding my Sundays and not missing because of the new assignment but uh, as Dr. as Bishop Turner said when he called me I uh, immediately said yes and uh, some of you may know that, that not only is it challenging for a new pastor to be away on a Sunday but most pastors try not to miss the first Sunday most pastors try not to miss the first Sunday because that's when the eagle flies. And, uh, <laughs> and so uh, uh, I'm just letting you know that this place is very special to my heart. I can't believe that it was 32 years ago this year that a very young, very young man uh, came to Habit of Grace. I was only about three years old. And they elected me to be their pastor at three years old because uh, I'm only 35 now. And uh, I can't believe that the time has gone by that fast. And, uh, and then I was thinking about the fact that another young man came and became the pastor. And it's been uh, 23 years this year. Where has the time gone? Where has the time gone? It still seems like that in my mind I've got to adjust because uh, Deacon Smith, I think of him as the new pastor, 
but the new pastor's been here almost three times as long as the old pastor was. <laughs> Amen. But I, I, I consider, and I think my family would echo this, and I bring greetings on behalf of First Lady Shirley Moore, but I think that they would echo this sentiment also, that our eight years in Harford County and in Habit of Grace were some of the best years of our lives. And so I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful, I'm grateful to see uh, what God is doing here, the, the, the growth, the, and now a new season as two great churches have become one great church. Amen. We celebrate not only the legacy of Pastor Croxell and Pastor Barnes, but we celebrate now the legacy of Bishop uh, Bishop Barnes, amen, and Pastor Larry Ringgold, as we have all become one great heritage and legacy. Would you give yourselves a hand clap, please? Amen. 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 I'm not going to weary your patience um, if I can help it, uh, but I want to turn in, in our Bibles to the book of Genesis and uh, uh, I, I'm afraid to get into trying to name names uh, because I know I'll miss somebody. And uh, so I'm just glad to see all of you. So many faithful faces. Uh, but I can't miss the Schultz on the second row. And, <laughs> and, 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 and uh, I see some pounds in here. And I see uh, Lady Hogue and Deacon Hogue. Amen. And, and where, is, where is Brother Croxell? Where is Brother Crux? All right, looking sharp, looking sharp, looking sharp. We thank God for the founder's son, amen, and all of the members that, that I had the privilege of pastoring and leading. Uh, let's go to uh, Genesis, the 12th chapter. And um, there's a verse I'd like to lift in your hearing. If you don't mind, would you just stand as we read from the word of the Lord and as we pray? And I thank God for our uh, sound team. Uh, they have one of the most thankless jobs in the church. Uh, I'm just going to ask you all to blow my hair back up here. If you can give me some more up here, amen. Uh, uh, help me out. They say a preacher is nothing but a voice crying. And if he loses his voice, he's nothing at all. So if you'll help me out, there, there you go. It's getting a little bit better. Um, uh, preachers are hard of hearing traditionally. Amen. At least in the pulpit we are. There you go. There you go. Genesis 12, thank you. And uh, verse number um, 8 is, is my key verse. But I think I will uh, begin at verse number uh, 6. It says, And Abram passed through the land into the place of Sikkim, unto the plain of Moreh, and the Canaanite was then in the land. And the Lord appeared unto Abram and said, Unto thy seed will I give this land. And there builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. There builded he an altar unto the Lord who appeared unto him. And he removed from there unto a mountain on the east of Bethel and pitched his tent, having Bethel on the west and Hai on the east. And there he builded an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. There builded he an altar unto the Lord and called upon the name of the Lord. And while we're standing, we're going to pray. <clears throat> but I just want to talk to you for a few minutes on the subject, meet me at the altar. Meet me at the altar. Amen. Before I, before I pray, I, I do want to say how grateful I am for the ministry and the work of Bishop Lamont Turner. Amen. I appreciate you, sir. Amen. He has, uh, throughout the uh, 23 or so years since we've been here, has uh, 
never fail to show honor and kindness to myself and to our family. And uh, that's a rare, rare quality. Real honor is something that is rare. Most people only honor when they get something out of it. But I appreciate you, and I appreciate the honorable way that you've carried yourself. And the Lord uh, is, is, is rewarding that, the years of service that you've given uh, as he is elevating you now, uh, now uh, highway to city of God, highway to Zion, I got to get all that in my mouth now, uh, is the seat of a bishop. I wish somebody would give God some praise. Amen. Amen. I believe you'll be consecrated in the summer convention. He'll be consecrated as the, as the diocesan of the D.C., Delaware, and Maryland Council. I wish somebody would. Now, if I was my pastor, Bishop James Nelson, I, I would say, y'all too quiet for me. Amen. Uh, every, it's a poor frog doesn't praise his own pond. You ought to be giving God a great shout for what God is doing in your pastor's life. Meet me at the altar. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege that we have to be here and to share with the great people of God. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing, uh, not only in Harford County, but what, what you're doing in our lives and in our world. We thank you because there's more going on in the invisible realm than what we can even see in the natural realm. We thank you because the invisible is more real than what we can see and what we can touch. We ask you now, God, that you will send an anointing as I stand to preach. Send an anointing that makes preaching easy. Touch every heart. Touch every mind. Touch every spirit, every soul. Change us. Renew us. Transform us. Revive us. Do something that only you can do. And we'll be careful to thank, praise, and give you the glory. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. We take pride in being a technological society. This new thing called AI is taking the world over by storm. This new thing called AI. Someone introduced me to an app uh, not long ago. They said, look, uh, Bishop, uh, I, I was, I picked up my phone and I was texting somebody. They said, hold up, Bishop, you don't need to do that. And they said, uh, download this app. You're going to thank me later. And so I downloaded the app. And they said, all right, now what I want you to do is go in the app and tell it the message you want to give and the AI will write the message for you. And then they said, now you, you copy that and you take it over to the text you're trying to send and paste it in. And I thought, well, by the time I do all of that, thank God for AI, but I could have got the text out already. <laughs> Amen. But, but it, is still, it is still a testament that technology is advancing at a scary fast pace. They're trying to figure out what to do about the technology, this thing called AI, because it can be tremendously helpful, but it can also be destructive. Think about it. We have cars now that will drive themselves. Uh, if you buy certain cars, you can program the car and the car will drive itself. They'll tell you don't go to sleep, but what's the point of having a car that drives itself? If you, well, never mind. But, uh, uh, you know, the car will drive itself. It will literally show you on all sides of the car, on the screen, who's around you, what's going on. That, when I was growing up, was just a fantasy that there would be cars that would drive themselves. And they say, well, what, what's going to be next? A flying car? And I assure you that's on the way too. Uh, but technology, does anybody, is anybody old enough in here to remember when we did not have these things called cell phones? 
Uh, does anybody remember the first cell phone, that the first cell phone was about the size of a brick? And, and folk were carrying those things around, tremendously proud. And then I got in on it when the cell phone moved to what they called a bag phone. Brother Mark, I, I, I had a bag phone. And I only got that reluctantly when my wife was carrying one of our children. I said, well, I've got to be accessible if she calls me from her landline at the house. So I had a bag phone that I'd carry around with the phone in the bag. And I don't know why you needed the bag, but that's how the technology was. And, and then I remember they got the, the car phones that were mounted in the car and hardwired into the car. I wish I was in the right church. And then, of course, uh, I, I, you got the flip phone. Anybody remember the flip phone? Uh, my, my first... My first phone with the number that, that, that Dr. Turner inherited, my first phone, uh, I think it was 808 something or other, that, that, that first phone was a flip phone, and I was so proud of that flip phone that I had. I felt like Star Trek, just flip it open and, and beam me up, Scotty. Is anybody thankful for technology and what technology has done? We've got smartphones and we've got smart houses now. You can you can program your house when the lights will come on and, and when the when the when the door will open. All these kinds of technologies have come to pass. I remember when when uh, when they got the technology called a dishwasher. Before the dishwasher, we were the dishwashers. Come on, before the remote control, anybody in here old enough to remember when you were the remote control? And mama would call you from the couch. You were off in another part of the house. Said, come here, boy. And, and you'd come in, well, yes, ma'am, what do you need? Go switch that channel for me. And you go over there and switch the channel. Sometime you were not only the remote control, you were the antenna. I took you all way back. Anybody know what it is to be? They had the, the, uh, the antenna, but you'd have to stand there and, and try to hold it. and uh, Stay right there. Hold it just like that. And she's watching her show, and you are the antenna and the remote control. Turn and tell somebody, say, technology has come a long way. And we have a tendency to be proud. We have a tendency to be proud of ourselves because we live in this technological age. But we have forgotten that there are some ancient technologies. There are some ancient technologies that are mind-blowing in their power and in their impact. And they are life-changing. And sadly, we have lost, we have lost many of the ancient technologies that bring about supernatural breakthrough and supernatural power. We think that we're technological and we don't even realize that God is the inventor of voice-activated technology. I wish I was in the right church. Would you please just testify to somebody say, we live in a voice-activated kingdom. In other words, what you say, that's why you had the declarations earlier in the service, because what you say is what you will see. It is voice activated. Jesus said you shall have what you say if you pray in faith believing. I'm thinking about uh, another technology that many people overlook. We think about the Ark of the Covenant and many of us don't even realize that that was ancient technology at work. It was supernatural divine technology. I did some study some time back and I discovered that the Ark of the Covenant, according to Jewish scholars, the Ark of the Covenant would have weighed somewhere uh, between 500 and 2,000 pounds. And yet the Bible talks about it being carried on the shoulders of Levites. Well, I'm wondering how strong those Levites were. But the reality is this ancient technology called the Ark of the Covenant, they were only uh, carrying it, so to speak, bearing it on their shoulders, but they were not really carrying it because the Ark had the technology within itself that God had put in it that it was able to be self-carrying, self-supporting, self mobile. Uh, there's a passage in the Old Testament where it talks about the ark went before the people. The ark, the ark left, the Bible said the ark left its place and went before the people and scouted out a place for Israel to camp. So that tells me that there's more to it 
than what meets the eye. The fact that if you touched it, it could kill you. The fact that when they took it into battle, it would cause the enemy to die. The fact that when they put it in a heathen temple, it caused the idol to fall down and break up. That tells me that God had created a, a technology that we even today don't understand. Well, brothers and sisters, I want to talk about another supernatural technology on this morning that has been lost in our modern era. Most of us, when we think about an altar, only think about a place of slaughter. We think about a place of sacrifice. We think about a place where blood was shed and where death took place. When we think about an altar, we think about something that symbolizes uh, uh, acknowledgement of, approach to, an appreciation of God. In other words, uh, you think about worship when you think about an altar. Am I in the right church? Hallelujah to God. So two thoughts I just shared. One is, when you think of an altar, you think about sacrifice, bloodshed, but secondly, you think about worship. That tells me, that tells me that you cannot have worship without sacrifice. Have you ever been to one of those churches where uh, about midway in the worship, they say, well, now we're going to change the order of the service and we're going to receive an offering. Can I tell you that that's a lie? They, they had it already planned in the order of service to receive an offering. Uh, and so whenever someone says we change the order to have an offering, that's a lie. But the reality is uh, uh, the, the, we're, we're trying to deal with the mentality that people have that somehow an offering is an imposition but the reality is an offering is a divine technology that is a part of our worship when we give it's sowing a seed and what you give always produces a harvest somebody tell me to go ahead and hear today uh huh, and, and so, brothers and sisters, you cannot have worship without sacrifice. In Genesis 8 and verses 20 through 22, where Noah, uh, we see there where Noah sacrificed clean animals as burnt offerings to express his worship, and a sweet savior aro savor arose to God. Now, altars, listen to this, uh, they had to be unpretentious and unembellished uh, within a human workmanship. They were, they were marked by utter simplicity. Uh, they were built to encourage and to facilitate men in seeking God. Listen, listen. Uh, no doubt altars were used from the days of Abel, who brought an offering. He first brought an offering by divine instruction. The later altars for the tabernacle and the temple had to be constructed strictly according to divine design. They all foreshadowed the person and the sacrificial work of Jesus Christ. The altar, brothers and sisters, teaches us in type the importance of daily communion with God on the basis of the precious blood of Jesus. Altars, altars uh, are more than what just meets the eye. Please hear what I'm saying. Uh, altars are more than what meets the eye. Uh, we think of Abram who became Abraham as the father of the faithful. We think of him as the first, one of the first men that God called a friend. He said, Abram is my friend. I won't do anything without telling him what I'm doing. But notice this, uh, that when God began to deal with Abram, the first thing, the first thing that Abram does uh, in his walk with God, one of the very first things, uh, listen to this, is that he builds an altar. He builds an altar. In fact, everywhere that Abram went, uh, it's characterized by two things. He pitched a tent uh, and he built an altar. He did what? He pitched a tent and he built, and he did what? He pitched a tent and what else? He built an altar. Let me say it again. He did what? He 
pitched a tent and he he pitched a tent and he did what nowadays we have a tendency to pitch altars and build tents uh, y'all not hearing what i'm saying uh, but abram knew the right order to approach god uh, and he pitched his tent that he pitched where he was going to live in other words uh, he realized that where i live is not as important as the altar i build to god uh, hallelujah there was no record of where his tent was but even today you can go places uh, in the holy land and someone will point that's where abram had an altar because altars are built to last help me here Holy Ghost stay with me for just a moment what is an altar it is a place of sacrifice but listen listen please don't miss this lesson today an altar is more than just a place of sacrifice an altar is more than just a place of worship but listen to this an altar is a place of spiritual commerce ah both in the divine realm and in the demonic realm hear me now an altar is a place of spiritual commerce it's interesting in a, in a terrible way to note uh, that most christians don't value altars as much as witches do can I talk to somebody? Christians, uh, so-called, uh, don't value altars as much as warlocks and, and, and heathen do. Uh, Christians don't value altars uh, as much as the demonic, satanic worshipers do. Uh, because they understand uh, that if I want to have commerce with the spiritual realm, uh, I've got to do it by way of an altar altar and I said a moment ago you can't pitch an altar you've got to build an altar an altar is a place of real commitment can I say that again and I need you to repeat to somebody say Bishop told me to tell you that an altar come on tell them say Bishop told me to tell you that an altar is a place of commitment hallelujah to God you cannot have an altar without making a real commitment somebody clap your hands for the Lord hallelujah to God it is a place of commerce an altar is a spiritual intersection an altar here's the technology of an altar an altar is a gateway into the supernatural can I say it again an altar is a gateway into the supernatural it is a portal into another dimension to another world an altar is an intersection an altar is a place that gives earthly permission for divine intervention when you build an altar it gives God permission or gives a spirit permission to come on the earth to operate in the earth there are laws that govern the supernatural uh, did you know that a spirit being uh, is not really legally allowed to operate in the earth uh, without a body to operate in uh, no wonder Jesus said thou has prepared for me a body can I talk to somebody uh, I come in the volume of the book uh, when God wanted to do something in the earth he had to prepare a body because he said I will not violate my own laws as to how this earth is to operate and so an altar gives permission for spiritual activity on the earth I wish I had somebody that was praying with me today an altar is a place of covenant it's a place where altars are sealed and an altar requires an attendant can I say it a little slower an altar requires an attendant now let me just ask maybe I brought this message to the wrong church but I just need to know is there anybody in this room that needs some divine intervention in your life can I find those that need God to do something will you just jump up right quick and say that's me Bishop ah, hallelujah I got five of you six of you that said I need God to do something does anybody need a miracle that only God could do would you just wave your hand at me and say that's me preacher I need God to do something uh, 
Does anybody need God to do something in your family? Would you wave your hand at me? Does anybody need God to do something in your finance? Uh, would you wave your hand at me? Does anybody need God to do something in your physical body? Would you wave your hand at me? Is there anybody that needs God to do a God thing in your career or in your relationships? Uh, would you wave your hand at me? Uh, can I get about 15 people that will lift your voice and say, I need God. Woo, it's starting to sound like a church up in here. I need God to do something. I, I need God to, to intervene. I, I need God to work a miracle. I need God to heal a situation. I, I just need those that really know you need a supernatural uh, resolution to your issue. Shout glory. So I need a technology. I need a technology that will bring the supernatural into my natural. I need a technology that will bring about freedom in my life from oppression. I need a technology that will change my situation. I, I was worried for a minute if I was in the wrong church. Yeah. I need a technology. And I want you to understand that the spiritual world operates by way of altars. I said a moment ago, you can't really pitch an altar. It's going to take some time to build an altar. Can I tell you something? I want to tell you your life, your destiny, your success, your failure, your children's destiny, success, and failure is all going to be defined by altars. Some of you have strange things that have been happening in your family. You notice that in your family, the men only live to be this number of years old, and they suddenly die. Hallelujah. You notice in your family, there's a high incidence of cancer. There's a high incidence of diabetes. In your family, it seems like every generation has unwed children. Now, can I tell you that there's a reason for these kinds of things that happen? Now, poverty tracks some families. Uh, doesn't matter how much education you get. Doesn't matter how many degrees you get. Uh, you seem like no matter how many degrees, uh, how good a job, you can't keep the job. It's because, it's because there's been a supernatural intervention that somebody has placed on your family and there's been an altar that's been built against your family built against your life built against your destiny built against your children come on I wish I had some real folk in here you got crazy stuff happening intergenerationally in your family you got intergenerational dysfunction and you wonder why generation repeats generation of folk not getting Getting along, falling out, not able to talk to each other. Could it be that there's a demonic altar that has been erected against your family? Why do all the males die? Why do all the, the, the young men end up in prison? In my family. Why is drug addiction such a plague? It, it's not, you can't localize it to a place. You could blindfold us and move us to another part of the country in the country. And somehow, in Montana, in South Dakota, you moved us from Baltimore, from Philly. You moved us way out where we don't know anybody. And, 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 and a generation comes, and, 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 and within a few years, the drug addiction is back. It's an altar. Somebody has done, has done commerce a generation or two or three ago and has given the family over to the enemy. You don't even know what you're dealing with. You don't even know why your family's in such a turmoil. 
It's because there's an altar that's got to be torn down. And the only way you can tear an altar that's demonic down is you got to build a divine altar. Look at somebody say, help me build an altar. You don't build an altar that's going to last just as an overnight thing. You got to be willing to attend to that altar. You got to be willing to stay at that altar. You got to be willing to linger at that altar. You got to be willing to meet at that altar until God knows that you're serious and that I'm going to stay right here until I die if you don't come and meet me. But God, I'm not going to be satisfied with just another church service. I'm not going to be satisfied with just another anniversary service. I'm not going to be satisfied with just another shout, just another dance. I got to see God move in a new encounter in my life that breaks the curse on my family. Somebody tell me to go ahead. I got to break this curse. Tell three people, say, I got to break this curse. I got to break this curse. I got to break. Come on, mama. Shut up. Hi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell somebody else, say, I got to break this curse. I can't go on like this. There's got to be a breakthrough in my life. Somehow, someone's got to change. Can I preach to somebody? So everywhere that Abram went, the Bible said he pitched a tent. And he built an altar. He went to a place east of Bethel and pitched a tent. And he built an altar. Hallelujah. He pitched a tent and he built an altar there to the Lord. And what I'm trying to tell you is I'm almost finished here today. Is that God is trying to raise up some altar builders. God is trying to raise up some people that will not just take an altar call for granted. He's trying to raise up some people that will say, I will linger and I will stay in your presence, Lord, each day until your likeness can be seen in me. I'm going to stay right here at the altar until miracles happen. I'm concerned about the American church. Hallelujah to God because we're so easily satisfied. Uh, Most of us in the American church, uh, we don't have a prayer life. Uh, We can't even pray one hour. Uh, Can I preach to somebody in here? Uh, Most Americans, if you set them down, uh, in Korea where there's a prayer culture, uh, in Nigeria where there's a prayer culture, uh, hallelujah, we would pray for maybe 10 minutes uh, and then we would sit down uh, and begin to look around. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, Hallelujah. We want to open the Bible, start reading the Bible. uh, Because we don't pray like other folk in the world pray. uh, But God is calling for a people uh, that will begin to do business in the divine realm. Uh, Is there anybody in the room that's hungry for a divine move of God? Uh, And I want to tell you, I want to go further than what I am. Uh, Would you please just give somebody a high? five uh, as if you want to go far uh, you got to pray long uh, we got to get back to the place uh, where we pray for one two three four five hours uh, I know this ain't gonna be a shouting message uh, but we got to get back to the place uh, where we say God I'm gonna meet you right back here at this altar tomorrow uh, I'm gonna be here for another two hours uh, because I want God to know uh, that I'm serious about a breakthrough Uh, Do I have anybody in the room uh, that's serious about a breakthrough? Uh, Just shout yes! Shout yes! Uh, Say yes! Hallelujah! Somebody say hallelujah! Somebody say hallelujah! I just need 15 folks shout breakthrough! Yeah! Yeah, hallelujah. 
a breakthrough doesn't come because of somebody else you're watching them pray but if you want to change the destiny of your family you got to build an altar and say God I'm going to attend this altar until the heaven the heavens open up I'm going to attend this altar until it makes a landing place in the earth I'm going to attend this altar until a gateway opens I'm going to pray here for hours I'm going to pray here in the Holy Ghost if it takes me five six seven eight ten hours I'm going to keep on praying until something opens up in the heavens this is not going to be a moment of prayer this is not even going to be a sweet hour of prayer but I'm willing to stay here because I've got to see my children and my children's children delivered Abraham pitched a tent and built an altar in some 80 years 85 years it might have been close to 100 years went by and it looked like nothing had happened it looked like it hadn't made a difference but there was a young man who was on the run a young man who had swindled his brother and his brother said I'm gonna kill him soon as my daddy die I'm gonna kill him I'm not gonna kill him while dad is alive but dad is old now he said if you don't get out of here you're gonna die this young man on the run who thought he was finally in control of his own destiny thought he was finally in control of his own direction he's on the run and he comes the Bible says he landed he lighted upon a certain place and that night he was tired hallelujah and the Bible said he laid down at that place and he said he had a rock for a pillow and as he laid there, the, 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 the Lord opened his eyes in a dream. And the Bible says he looked in the dream and saw heaven was open. And angels were descending on a stairway from heaven. Now, angels were ascending back into heaven. Now, what the Bible says when he woke up, he says, oh my God, uh, this is the house of God. Uh, this is the gateway to heaven. Uh, the Lord is in this place and I didn't even know it. Uh, what are you talking about? Jacob, the grandson. The grandson of Abram who didn't even know that his grandfather had built an altar there. Hi, yeah, yeah. You can build something that your grandchildren may not even know you did it. But God, when they think they're on their own, now, when they think they're moving their own way, doing their own thing, God will allow them to land where your altar was. I'm trying to tell somebody, I wish I could hoop today, but I don't know if I'm going to make it into the hoop. But I'm trying to tell somebody that God wants to do something through your prayer, through your commitment, uh, through your covenant with God uh, that will impact generations. Jacob was arrested because Abram built an altar. Jacob's destiny was changed because Abram built an altar. Jacob's family becomes Israel because Abram built an altar. And I'm trying to tell you something's gonna happen in your family when you build an altar your children that are on drugs are going to be transformed when you build an altar generational curses are going to be broken when you build an altar lives are going to be changed when you build an altar Lean over and tell somebody, meet me 
Put your preacher voice on and tell somebody, say, meet me at the altar. Ah, meet me, meet me at the meeting place with God. We think, we think, we think, we think, we think that altars are just the front of the church. We're going to have an altar call. Everybody, come on down to the altar. Well, first of all, you got the, te- the terminology wrong. You don't come down to an altar. Can I tell you, every time you come to this altar, you ain't going down, baby. You're going up. Don't ever say come down to the altar because the altar is always a high place. It's at the altar I got healed. It's at the altar I got delivered. It's at the altar I got set free. It's at the altar I got filled. But can I, can I tell you, this really is just symbolic of the altar you're supposed to build in your life. Would you please help me preach? Ask somebody, say, have you built an altar lately? See, we have a tendency, Sister Judy, we have a tendency to pitch an altar. And so we'll pitch an altar. It's like a tent. We go there and meet God for a month. We pitch an altar. We're going to meet God, you know, for January, 21 days. Somehow 21 has become the magic number. But I'm going to go on a three-day fast. Like three days is the magic number. When you build an altar, it is a commitment that says, I'm going to stay here every day as long as it takes. I don't just want a good feeling. I want deliverance. I want breakthrough. And the only technology for your breakthrough is the spiritual altar. I'm going to stop because you all have had enough of me today. But listen, destiny destiny is launched at an altar. Is anybody in here that's like me? I'm desperate. Listen, Mark, I'm desperate for my destiny. I'm in the wrong church because y'all are just happy to be in church. It's another Sunday. Easter was last Sunday. Glory to God. This is the Sunday after Easter and it's our anniversary. And so you're just tripping through life. You're just tripping through life one day to another and don't realize you have a destiny. I'm going to ask again, is there anybody in here beside me that's desperate for destiny? I've reached a point, Bishop Turner, that in my life I cannot just... I cannot just do ministry as usual. I cannot just do church as usual. I got more years behind me than I have in front of me. And if God is going to do anything in my life, he's got to do it now. I want some hungry folk in here. Lean over and tell somebody, say, I can't die like this. Tell somebody, say, I cannot die like this. There's too much in me that's unfulfilled. There's too much on me that's not been manifested. There's too much that God has spoken over my life that has not come to pass. Stand with me. Stand with me. Stand. Stand with me. I'm not too proud 
to say I'm realizing at 61 years old that there's some curses on my family. And somebody's got to rise up and be the watchman and say it stops here. It stops here. It stops here. Somebody has got to take responsibility for family and say drug addiction stops in this generation. Premature death stops in this generation. Somebody put your hand up and say it stops here. Yeah, you're saved. Yeah, you're saved. Yeah, you're saved. But what about your children? I read somewhere that the promise is unto you and to your and to your children's children. And all those that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Shh, can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question? How many of you would wake up at midnight tonight to discover there's been a gas leak in your house? And the gas fumes have flooded through the house. Your children are asleep on the third floor. You got family visiting you from out of town. They're asleep on the second floor. You woke up. I got to get out of this house. It could either be an explosion or I could be overcome with gas. How many of you would leave the house and leave your loved ones in the house knowing that they're going to die tonight? Just, just, just raise your hand. I want to know who to prosecute. I'm sorry, but I got to save myself. How many of you would wake up tonight at midnight and the house is on fire? The fire started in the basement. You, you wouldn't try to put it out. You couldn't put it out but you've got enough time to get out the house. How many of you would leave the house? House is on fire and wouldn't wake up. Well, they need their rest. They told me they were tired. We had an argument. They told me not to bother them anymore. How many of you would leave your loved ones in a burning house? then please pray tell me how can you come to church every week knowing you got loved ones that are on their way to a burning hell and you never shed a tear You stopped praying for them you stopped inviting them you don't fast for them You're guilty. Negligent homicide. You knew. You know. They're on their way to destruction. And you know the technology that's needed to stop it all. And you won't build an altar. Because I got to have a life. I got to go fishing. I got to go hunting. I've worked hard. I need a break. I need some time. I need family time. Oh, God. 
Oh God, give us a burden again. Wake us up. Jesus' ministry was launched at an altar. Forty days in the wilderness fasting. It was an altar. It was an altar. When you go on a long fast, it's an altar. He built an altar in the wilderness. That's where his ministry launched from. Later in his ministry, it came time for him to be sacrificed. He was at another altar in a place called Gethsemane where he yielded to the will of God and said, Father, if it be possible, let this come pass. But nevertheless, not my will, thy will be done. And history has been forever changed because our Savior built an altar. Well, I know I'm over time, but can I tell you the altar's open right now? This altar's open right now for some people that will get up here that will say, I got to get busy. I got a destiny to pursue. Brother Harvey, I can't die here. I may be in my 60s, but I'm still young enough to get something done. I'm not retiring from, from serving God. I'm opening this altar right now for some people that will meet me at this altar and say, I need, to, I need to make a gateway. Abram made an altar that 80 years later, angels were still ascending and descending from that supernatural gateway. 80 plus years later, angels are still coming down. Because he built an altar. 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 I decree over your life that your grandchildren are going to be impacted. Because you're building an I decree over your life that generations that are not even born yet, that have your seed, are going to be impacted because you build an altar. I decree that, that drug addictions and bondages and curses are about to be broken off of your life and off of this community, off of this county because somebody is building an altar. Draw me nearer Nearer, blessed Lord To the cross Where Thou Hast died Draw me near Nearer Nearer, blessed Lord divine let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thy Draw me 
Listen very carefully. Listen very carefully. Something's changing right now. Something's birthing in your spirit right now. And as of today, if you'll receive what I'm saying, what I'm saying, you'll never be the same. Who am I talking to in here that has been experiencing unexplained hell in your life? Would you just wave at me? Unexplained hell, unexplained turmoil, unexplained pain. You're holding it together, but you folk don't know how much you're hurting on the inside. Would you just wave your hand at me? Just, just hey, kapaya, she te kataya. Could it be that the only reason God is allowing you to feel that right now is to get your attention? He's been trying to draw you into another place. Because your family needs saving. A generation's at risk. And God chose you to use you. I'm on a journey, Bishop. I'm on a, I'm on a journey. I can count on one hand the days in 2024 that I've not fasted because I'm on a journey something's got to happen it's been less than 10 days in 2024 that I've not prayed at least two two to four hours because I'm on a journey something's got to happen I heard a pastor from Africa and this began to change something on the inside of me. He said, I came to a place in my family, curses, father died, and I, I made a decision, I'm going to seek God until he shows up. And if he doesn't show up, I ain't coming back. What are you looking for? Ask somebody, say, what are you looking for? He said, I, I begin to fast and pray. Six to eight hours a day, praying in the Holy Ghost. He said, I begin to fast and pray. He said, and a hundred days went by. I'm still fasting and praying. He said, I'd go out every night to the football, soccer field. He'd go out to the football field. He said, I'd pray for five hours. He said it was on the 240th day when I came back into my room, four angels were waiting for me. They began to prophesy to me and tell me things. He said at that point, power came in my ministry. Miracles started happening. He said even right now when I preach angels, I can see the angels in the room. He said, I went on further. He said, I heard the Lord say, I, I, I hear you praying. He said, what do you mean you hear I'm praying? He said, I've been praying all this time. You just now saying you hear me? He said, but God spoke to him just so he wouldn't be discouraged. Within a few more months, he said, being consistent at that altar. He said, Jesus Christ himself appeared to him. I want to tell you, I heard the confession today. Unusual manifestation. Somebody say unusual manifestation city of god that's got to be more than just bishop turner's confession is there anybody maybe i'm in the wrong church i know i know i've lost some folks attention because this is not snazzy but is there anybody in the room that wants a, a, an encounter with jesus would you would you raise i want an encounter Elder Hogue, I don't just want, listen to me, 
I don't just want goosebumps. I've had that. I just don't want the hair to stand up on the back of my neck. I've had that. I don't just want to feel the presence of God. I've had that. I want an encounter with God that will change everything in my life. I'm just trying to impart something to you today. I, I, can't, I can't lay hands on everybody, but I want to impart something to you today that there will be at least 25 people in this church that will make a commitment today to God that says, I'm going to build an altar. You build it by meeting there every day. You build it by being faithful to it morning and night until the Spirit shows up. Every altar has an attending spirit. I want, I want the spirit of my altar, the Holy Ghost, to show up at my altar. Bishop, I hope this is all right today. Every head bowed. Shitakataba. Iba ba 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 shatakataya. If, if you have your prayer language, if you have the Holy Spirit, pray in the Holy Ghost right now. Just come on, come on, release the tongues of angels. when you pray in tongues you build capacity when you when you pray in tongues you're building capacity when you pray in tongues you're building capacity you're expanding room for the Holy Ghost to do something greater in your life the reason why many of us don't see signs wonders and miracles we don't have the capacity for it hey rabbi Oh, Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you for this technology for supernatural breakthrough, oh, God. Thank you for this technology, oh God, uh, for real deliverance, uh, for real transformation, uh, for real breakthrough. Uh, oh God, uh, where is the God of Elijah? Uh, Lord, we need you to answer by fire today. Uh, oh, 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 touch right now, God. Uh, deliver right now, God. Uh, breakthrough right now, God. Uh, stir up right now, God. Uh, Bring a ya ya ba shata. Bring about a change right now, God. We repent right now, Lord, for, for, for disobeying your voice. We repent right now, God, for not following you closely. We repent right now, God, for being lax and casual. We repent right now, God, for being unconcerned. But oh, God, we need you right now. Such, Lord, as only you can. Stir us up. Birth something in us. Uh, stir us up. Uh, do a new thing, God. Uh, we praise you, Lord. Uh, Satan, take your hand off. Uh, I plead the blood of Jesus uh, against every spirit of complacency. Uh, I plead the blood of Jesus uh, against apathy. Uh, I plead the blood of Jesus uh, against spirits of religion, uh, against self-righteousness. Uh, I plead the blood of Jesus. Manifest your glory, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, uh, lift those hands uh, and begin to bless him right now. Oh, Come on, begin to bless him. Begin to bless him. Uh, lift those hands and bless him. Uh, hey, 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 hey. Oh, ba ya ya sha ya ya. Yeah. I want those of you. 
Ah, yeah, yeah, listen. I want those of you that have made a quality decision that this is going to be your year of seeking God. I mean, you really mean it. If Bishop doesn't call a special fast, this is my year I got to get a breakthrough. I'm going to pray in tongues until my capacity is enlarged. I'm going to meet God until he meets me in a divine encounter. I want those that really mean that, that are really committing to that. Before you go back to your seat, just come up and touch this altar in the name of Jesus. Tabashata. Ayayayaya babasha. Oh, bababa. Shete kataya. Hey. 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 Revival in Hartford County. Revival in Hartford County. Revival. Ayayaya. City of God. Revival. Families are going to be delivered. Kids are going to be broken out of drugs. Uh, marriages are going to be restored. Uh, generations are going to be assured. Uh, revival. Oh. I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. quick I want to I want to I want to leave a seed at this altar because an altar is a place of sacrifice an altar is a place of sacrifice I want you to get ready to sow with me right quick if you've really been blessed hi yeah 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 you all know I'm a I'm a I'm a hooping moaning shouting preacher hey rah, bah, 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 but this is not that kind of day today I'm a my shot over shot yeah Ah, yeah, yeah. This is a transformation day. Lean over and tell somebody, say, this is transformation day. Curses are being broken today. Oh, altars are being torn down. Everything that's been coming against your family, it ends today. It ends today. Sowing. 
I'm sowing a seed of $200 today. I'm asking for as many of you as will get a seed of between $74 and $100 and get up here with me right quick. Those of you that say, Bishop, I'm sowing a seed. I'm planting something today for the next generation. Between $74 and $100, move quickly. Move quickly, move quickly. Here's one. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, yeah, yeah. Here's another. Here's another. Come on, come on. Hey, ba 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 ba. Shit, hey. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> now, now, I wanted to touch and agree with y'all, but y'all left too fast. If if you're doing, just come stay right here for a minute. Just stay right here. Hey, ra ba 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 ba. Shit, Just come and stay right here for just a minute. Hey, ra ha shit, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody shout glory. At our church, this is the year of supernatural breakthrough. Supernatural breakthrough. I'm still waiting for a few others, a few others. You're giving between 74 and 100. Right quick, right quick, right quick. Right quick, right quick, right quick, right quick. Right quick, right quick, right quick. Right quick, I'm sowing a seed for breakthrough. You cannot buy a miracle, but you can sow a seed. And seeds give, they reproduce after their kind. There's about to be a breakthrough. There's about to be a performance. There's about to be a manifestation. Yeah! I just feel my preacher in me. Somebody put your preacher voice on and shout, yeah! Shout, yeah! I want those real quick, real quick, real quick, real quick. Now somebody said, Bishop, I don't have 74, but I can get pretty close to 50. If, you, if you're in that level of 50 or so, hi, yeah, 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 yeah. I want you to come quickly, quickly, quickly. Come on, join these. 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 We want to be a blessing. We're sowing a seed today, this, a breakthrough seed, a miracle seed, a deliverance seed, an altar seed, a sacrifice at our altar. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I want everybody else to get the best seed you can. And just get up here behind these. The last shall be first. Hey, hey, hey. Everybody else, get the very best seed you can. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, right, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm about, to, I'm about to pronounce a blessing. You need to get up here if you're going to get on this. I'm about to pronounce a blessing. I'm about to pronounce a blessing. See, this is where the rubber meets the road. This is where we show whether we're really serious about an altar. Hey! 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 Oh, right, yeah, yeah, my heart Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Lift your seat in your right hand, your phone, your seat, whatever it is. Say, this is my seat. I'm sowing it willingly and joyfully. And I boldly confess the blessing of the Lord is being released on my life. I am wealthy. I am prosperous. I'll never, never, never be broke again. In the name of Jesus, son. Say, I'm opening a gateway to supernatural increase. And it's happening right now. Oh, y'all didn't say it in faith. I said, it's happening right now at this altar. Now, I just want you to come and just touch me right quick. Ay, 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 ba, 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 sha, ta. Oh, ra, ba, ha, se, te. Ay, 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 bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, according to your faith. In Jesus' name, 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 Jesus, 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 break through, break through, break through. In the name of Jesus, 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 be it according to your faith. Be it done unto you in the name of Jesus. Life change, breakthrough, deliverance, answered prayers, curses are broken in the name of Jesus. It is so, 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 it is so. In the name of Jesus, it is so. In the name of Jesus, it is so. It is so, uh, it is so, uh, according to your faith, uh, 
never the same again. Uh, it is so. Uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh yeah, poverty is broken. Uh, poverty is broken. Somebody ought to shout, poverty is broken. Uh, poverty is broken. Uh, in the name of Jesus. 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 Uh, right now, right now. 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 Uh, come on and give God a shout. Come on and give God a shout. Something happens when I call your name. 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 Healing happens when I call your name. Healing happens when I call your name. Healing happens when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Something happens when, when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Healing happens when I call your name. Healing happens when I call your name. Healing happens when I call your name. Something happens when I call your name. Mountains move. Will you take this moment and just give Jesus great praise for what he's doing right now? Will you take this moment and bless his name? Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. done something wonderful in this place. More importantly, he has done something wonderful in our lives. Now, don't just, don't just uh, hear the message today and say we had a good time. Uh, the, that the bishop talked about uh, meeting God at the altar and then do nothing with it. Okay? And do nothing with it. You, you want to make sure uh, that you are um, making an altar. We've been talking about this for quite some time. We've been doing the prayer revival uh, since about uh, last year or, or more, week at month after month, several times a month. We've been watching God do some of the extraordinary things. Now God is saying 
uh, take yourself, bring yourself to that altar. Don't just, don't just wait for prayer revival to come uh, around and then you decide to do it. Make every day that moment where you are calling upon the Lord. Find a place. The Bible tells us in Exodus 20 that if you will build God an altar, the scripture says he'll, he will put his name there. Hallelujah. God said, I will come to you there. Hallelujah. God said, I will bless you there. You just got a designated place. God said, don't, if you'll build it, don't worry. I'll put my name there. I'll visit you there. I'll bless you there. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my son. Yes, Lord. the Lord, but you ain't just to dismiss, but just tell the person next to you something's about to change, because I just built God an altar. Something's about to change. Glory to God. Something's about to change. Something is about to change. Don't you dare listen to that devil. He is a liar and a deceiver. Something is about to change. Thank you, Lord. Hey, hey. And everything that God promised shall be restored. Your family, your name, wealth, your health, Thank you, God. I'm about to do it. Glory to God. Glory to Jesus. Glory to Jesus. Uh, let me do this. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Um, because of the, the church anniversary today, uh, we have a food truck that's actually outside right now waiting on you. Uh, waiting on you. Let, let me give you the menu so you know what we have today. Uh, there are uh, Buffalo Ranch Chicken Wraps, Cheesy Ranch Chicken Wraps, the Vegetarian Wraps. We got hot dogs, uh, there's coleslaw, uh, tomato basil, pesto salad. Uh, there is, uh, there it is, pulled pork, Angus burger, crab cakes, Chicken quesadilla. <laughs> oh, we got it. There's chicken tenders, right? Chicken tenders. We got it all today. We got it all today. Uh, <laughs> so here's what we need you to do. What you do? Uh, they're standing down there. Uh, Pastor LaShira and uh, Elder Jackie Watson are down, down there on the end. Uh, on your way out, grab the ticket, and you have to mark on, on the ticket it's already on there. All right. So, all right. So they got to get pick which one they want or all right. All right. So you got to pick which one you want. So when they when you go to the window that you give them the ticket, and they can prepare that. Now, uh, we love all we love all of you. Right? We love all of you. But if your cousin and them are not here today, <laughs> Uh, please don't ask for an extra ticket to take home because your cousin's at home and wanted to be here today. Uh, we love your cousin, uh, but <laughs> we want to serve those who are here. That's what we're trying to do. Uh, we want to serve those that, that are here. Now, uh, if your cousin is in desperate need, uh, we will make exceptions. However, uh, however, this is for those that are here today. Uh, we thank you for that. There's enough to go around so you don't have to fight anybody to get, to, to get a ticket. We got plenty of food. Uh, for you today. Bible studies on Tuesday, uh, 12 noon, 5.30, uh, 7 o'clock. Uh, we're looking forward to the Lord to do some uh, wonderful things. Um, let me give you this date here. Let me give you this date here. Uh, I forget it. J July, July 25th. July 25th, right? It's a Thursday, July 25th. That is the week of the Pentecostal end of the world. Uh, P.A.W., uh, that's, that's, I just said the same thing, that, that's their convention. On that 
25th at 9 a.m. is the consecration service for yours truly, right? 25th. <clears throat> It starts, at, it starts at 9 o'clock in the morning. Now, they've got a special section just for us, special seating just for our church. But you got to get there at 8.30 to get the special seating, all right? Uh, that way they can seat you all, all of us together. Uh, you can seat all, all of us together. So that's at 8. Uh, starts at 9 o'clock, but they, they, the special seating opens up at, at 8.30 uh, in the morning. I know. Uh, it's like you're like, oh my goodness, but you know, we go to work, it's, it's all good. Uh, and I, I appreciate your, your support on uh, that day. That's July 25th at 9. It will be at the Baltimore Convention Center. Baltimore Convention Center, thank you. Baltimore Convention Center uh, will be the, the location. So this uh, downtown, you got most of you all know, know where that is. July 25th, 9 a.m. Come on, let's stand. And we're ready now, right? Food's ready now. All right, wonderful. Uh, so you don't have to wait. Um, and you can, as a matter of fact, what you can do, you can shake hands while you're walking outside and standing in line and talk to one another, all that wonderful stuff. May the Lord bless you and keep you, cause his face is upon you, will be gracious unto you, lift up his countenance and give you peace in Jesus' name. Wasn't that an amazing service from the praise and worship to the word of God? And don't forget to join us on these same platforms on Tuesday for our 75 minutes of impact, 12 noon. 5.30 and 7 p.m. Also at 7 p.m. is our 75 minutes of impact for our youth. So bring your teens on out. We hope to see you on these same platforms next Sunday at 10 a.m. for our Sunday celebration. We hope you go home with a new word, new understanding from today. Have a blessed week, and we see you on these same platforms next week. Bye.